When we go to sea in Girona, there's only two people on the boat. And what that means is, is automation is super important to us, reliability is super important to us, and we want early warning of any problems whatsoever. An economical system we chose to rely on is the Maritron N2K view. It's, it's a system that gives us visibility to almost every instrument in the entire boat, all the nav gear, the weather instruments, depth sounders, um, power management. And so you can see the display we normally use um, when we're underway. It can be configured in almost any way you want. The three things that we focus on are first, we want it to be easy. So it looks complicated, but in fact, the first level read is just scanning for green lights. And as long as we're seeing nothing but green lights, we know the boat is in good shape, everything's in, in, in good condition. And it means that when you're tired, it's just an easy, quick check. If something goes wrong, you want to have more information at your fingertips because you don't particularly want to wake the other person up, and, but you do want to take quick action. And so what happens there is if something goes red, we can dig deeper and look at these displays and understand exactly what's going on. That's the second level of protection that we've got using this system. The third level is a little bit unusual. I've written software that, that pulls data off of the bus and stores it in the relational database. And so believe it or not, we have all of this data every five seconds for, for multiple years now. Um, that's useful in going back and understanding, has the engine temperature, is it running hotter than it used to? Or um, when did the power system first show that, that, that anomaly? Um, it's an excellent debugging aid. And so the combination of those three makes what might look like a little bit of a daunting display um, super useful and, and easy to dig deeper into. This is the power system on the Nordhaven 52 Dorona. We have the 12 volt system down through here. We've got the 24 volt system down through here. This is a 110 volt system. And through here is 240 volt system. One of the things, because this is where we control a lot of the systems on the boat, we want to make it easy and, 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 and unlikely to make a mistake. So we choose to use tie tags of different colors to mean different things. For example, an orange tie tag means it's optional, could be either way. No, no tie tag means it should be on. Red tie tag means it should be off. And as a consequence, for example, when we're going underway, yellow tie tags go on when you're underway. And so where we decide to move the boat right now, we flick on these yellow tagged um, items and we're ready to go. No mistakes, can't go wrong. Some of the things that we've done that are perhaps a little different on this is if you look down at the row of MBTs at the bottom, these transfer switches, normally there's only three. There's a there's a uh, 122, uh, there's an HVAC selector, a 122.40 selector, and a ship service selector. Let's focus on the ship service selector. Um, normally what that does is it controls what goes to the 240 volt system here. And so the standard configuration is it could be off, of course, it could be on shore power, or it could be on the generator. We've added an additional position, an inverter. And so we've got a 240 volt inverter. We can run all of this off the inverter, shore, or, or gen. In addition, we've taken the chargers off of this switch and put them on their own. And the, the selections for the charger is to run off the generator or run off shore power or automatically switch between the two of them. Of course, you'd never want to run it off the inverter. The beauty of separating this is that when we're running in a 50 hertz country, we can run the entire boat on the inverter, run the chargers off of, off of shore power on 50 hertz. Like for example, here in Port St. Charles, Barbados, we have 240 volts, but 50 cycle. And so the configuration that you're looking at is most of the house is running on the inverter and the chargers are all running off the shore power. Here's one that helps me get a little bit better sleep. Any of the navigational displays up in the pilot house can be repeated down here. And so we can select which of the four that we want from here. This is a, a typical display that shows all the engine instrumentation, weather systems, things like that. Things like that. And what it allows me to do is if I wake up in the middle of the night because I hear a strange noise or something doesn't feel right, before really waking up, I can look at the display, say nothing's wrong, and go back to sleep. 
One of the things that was super important to us, um, because we're living aboard and has worked out really well, is having a galley with um, real appliances. So we have a you know, full-size microwave, uh, you know, gas cooktop, but really controls the heat really well, full-size oven, we have a dishwasher, we have a garbage compactor, and that's just been wonderful it's just as a, as a condo when you're living aboard and also when you're at sea. And the boat goes to sea very easily and quickly, everything, so there's a fridge just can latch up and everything and, and it holds it well at sea. Uh, the Sub-Zero fridge has been astonishing. Um, it keeps food incredibly well with, and with some food preservation tricks I've got, I still have um, fresh lettuce from Cape Town over six weeks ago. And so it really increases our flexibility and range that we can have you know, fresh fruit and vegetables for when we're that long at sea or that long away from anywhere we can get provisions. So we made a number of modifications to the galley, uh, both to improve sort of storage utilization and to suit our purposes. And the yard did a, just an amazing job of everything. One of our favorites is this pantry that they built, which is um, really super heavy duty and it makes great use of this space and something that uh, a lot of other boats have uh, added since then, but we're really happy with the, the job the yard did on that and the great use of the space here. Again, because we're living aboard, another thing we really want to have was a full-size washer and dryer. And so uh, we have that. This is um, fairly standard on the 52s, is, uh, is a washer and dryer. So it's a full apartment size washer and dryer. And it's great to be able to do laundry and wash clothes. And again, it gives us kind of extended range so we don't have to go anywhere and do laundry. Um, another thing that we really wanted to have was a day head. And in the past, that's been done on the 47s and 52s by replacing this with a, with a combination and putting a day head here. Uh, we came up with a different way of doing it. We found a kind of a relatively unused spot, sort of a little bit of dead space, and the yard did a beautiful job of uh, putting in a day head and putting a wall, and then there's a door, slides, slides shut, gives it privacy, and it's worked out incredibly well. We just love having a day head here. Welcome to the engine room on Nordhaven 52 Dorona. Right in front of us here, we have a John Deere 6068 AFM 75. That's a 266 horsepower main engine. Um, having just completed the 3,691 nautical mile journey, you can imagine we love this engine. Um, over there, we've got a 12 kilowatt Northern Lights generator that's been truly wonderful. And we have a 40 horsepower lugger wing engine. We're surrounded by fuel here. There's 835 gallons in front of me, 835 gallons behind me, 65 gallons right here, and another 15 gallons on the other side. The way we choose to run the boat is we don't gravity feed. It's a really common design on a Norhaven for, for an owner to gravity feed um, the side tanks into the supply tank. And the advantage of that is it's just always full and you just run the fuel all the way down. We prefer not to for two reasons. One is, if there's something goes wrong in the fuel system and the fuel load's dropped, we want to have the side tanks and all of the, all of the fuel that we need get, to get back to shore safe. Second reason we like to run it the way we do is if we're actively pumping from the side tanks to this tank, it goes through a large Raycor FBO10 filter with a 25 micron uh, element. And that means any fuel that gets to the supply tank is always filtered at least once. In addition, it gets filtered again at the Raycor 900s and then twice more on the engine. So by the time the deer gets it, there's four levels of filtration. So the fuel system is pretty stable and, pr and pretty reliable for us. If you're used to looking at fuel manifolds for Nordhavens, one, that's a, one feature that's a little different on this boat is we have this, manifold, this setting, this valve added on the side, labeled bladders. What that allows us to do is when it comes time, when you're making a long trip, and you've got a lot of fuel on deck, it allows us to pump out the bladders by switching that valve over and pressing the switch, turning on the pump. It means we don't have to go outside. There's no risk of water getting in the fuel. And when we're done, we just take the valve, close it back off again. Wow, it's windy here in Port St. Charles, Barbados today. This is a piece of equipment that's one of my favorites on Dorona. Um, our goal when we, set, when, we, when we ordered the boat was to be able to launch our 850 pound tender to the port side of the boat, to the starboard side of the boat, or to the stern of the boat. The stern's particularly challenging on the 52 because it's a five foot extension on the 47. In addition, we have, an, we have another two feet of swim platform, which we truly love when it comes to diving, but that's a very long reach for a crane. So Steelhead produced this for us. It's able to reach out to the very, very back of the boat and drop the tender down behind. And no matter how we're parked, we can always launch a tender. 
You know, moments of ridiculousness, we've even launched the tender to the other side of the dock occasionally. Other things we've done with this most capable crane are take fuel from up here, take it down below, lift heavy things from down below up onto the boat deck. Occasionally, I'll use it to bring myself up to work on the satellite systems at the top of the dome. Once we used it to install a crane on a Nordhaven 62. A 62 was, was moored right beside us, and what we did is we picked up their crane, a new crane for them, off the dock, lifted it up, reached out beyond our boat over to halfway across the Nordhaven 62 to lower the crane gently onto gray, uh, onto gray matter, a Nordhaven 62 in Brisbane. It's, it's um, a very versatile device and we think Steelhead did an excellent job with this one.